It's me, Vicky Bunny, r slash Entitled Parents, where we will read Entitled Mom Decides Her Son Will Share My Parents' Hotel Room. This is an old one. My family was out of town for a wedding. My parents hadn't had much time to themselves lately, so they were excited to spend a weekend together on their own. They bought a suite with a jacuzzi and everything. Now my little cousin, second cousin specifically, is a handful. He throws tantrums when people don't pay attention to exclusively him or when he doesn't get exactly what he wants. Note that he was 12 at the time and old enough to know better. His parents couldn't make it to the wedding, so they had his grandma bring him on his own. At the end of our first night after the rehearsal dinner, he approached my parents and informed them that he would be sharing their room for the night. My parents were shocked because they had never discussed this with his parents. My mom spoke to his grandma and asked why he thought he was staying with them. She explained that he really wanted to stay in their room and she and his parents thought it would be alright. My parents tried to nicely suggest to him that he stay with his grandma instead, but he felt rejected and threw a fit. My parents eventually caved and let him stay with them for one night. The hotel set up a cot, but they told him he had to stay with his grandma for us the second night. Again, he threw a fit. The next day, his parents called my mom, furious. They wanted to know why he had upset their son. She said that he was just so excited to spend time with them and that they were being cruel. She demanded that he stay with them that last night and that they apologize for hurting his feelings. My mom tried her best to calmly explain that she was trying to enjoy her vacation and had not been asked to be responsible for him beforehand. But this lady was not having it. My mom remained firm on her decision. His grandma ended up taking him the night without making a big deal about it, but he ignored us for the rest of the vacation and his parents were mad at us for a while before eventually pretending the situation never happened. Comments. My sister recently suggested that she'd like to go on a family vacation with all siblings and their kids. I said that I would not be going. She asked why and straight to the point, I told her that I was not going to spend thousands of dollars on a vacation so that they could stick me with their kids while they enjoyed themselves. My sister's response, no, the guys would go off on their own and you and I would take the kids. Sorry, sis, but that's not happening. I specifically go on a vacation in the spring and in the fall to avoid the majority of children over the summer. She wants to go to Disney World during the summer months. No, thank you. Kimiko says, You and I would take the kids after saying no. That wouldn't happen? She literally said that you wouldn't get stuck with the kids and then in the same breath said that you'd be stuck with the kids. Raven says, exactly, I don't mind taking my nieces for the day when they visit, but I'm not spending money to babysit anyone's kids. Funtime says, I have a rule against multifamily vacations in general because everyone, at least in my family, argues and takes sides and I'm not interested in spending money to be stressed about that kind of petty BS. I'm the only sibling that doesn't go, and when they come back, I still get subjected to hearing both sides of the argument. Our next post is by O-V-Z-E. Obligatory English is not my first language, blah blah blah. Story takes place in Mexico City, so dialogues and stuff are roughly translated by yours truly. I know it's long, so apologize in advance and thanks for letting me vent. Edit. Been a while since I wrote the last time, a bit of a backstory relevant to the events, I'm a transgender man, had my top surgery a little over a year ago, yay! However, for personal and medical reasons, I decided to not go through HRT. Because of that and the fact that my height is around 1.52 for 9, I'm stuck in being perceived as a teen young adult. I am 35. So now to the story. I was hanging out at my favorite coffee shop. I always stay on the smoking area as I am, duh, I smoke her. Anyways, law over here states that to be able to stay at a smoking area, you need to be legal age to smoke 18 years old. Keep in mind though, this law is not as harsh and strict as in other places like the US. Bit relevant. Also, I have been a regular at his coffee place for at least 10 years. I know most of the waiters by name. Karen enters with a kid around the age of 5 and invades two tables. Bit roots and smoke area have only six tables, but whatever. One for her and the other for her son who proceeds to take out some crayons and coloring book. I ignore all this as I am lost in the book I am reading. At some point, I do a crazy thing such as light a smoke in a smoking area and few seconds later, I hear the dreaded sound of Karen cleaning her throat. I ignore her and the next exchange occurs. Karen! 
Hey, young man, listen to me. Me, annoyed as heck that my reading was interrupted. Yeah? Karen, don't you think it is a bit rude? You are blowing smoke all over my son. Me, points to the big sign on the wall that says, Smoking area, 18 only. Karen, do you even know how to talk? Are you retarded? Answer me. You are too young to be smoking anyways. Me, whatever lady, proceed to take headphones out of my back pocket and plug them in. Karen, keep speaking out by the miracle of technology, can't make out a word, she says. So I figured that was all. A few minutes later, I notice some commotion around me and again hear the sound of dear Karen's banshee howls. I look up and see Karen arguing with one of the waiters and pointed at me. So, of course, I take off my headphones to wear what was that all about. Karen, you have to do something. He is clearly underage and blowing smoke all over my son. Don't think for a second I won't call the I won't call the police on this. Waiter, ma'am, as I already told you, I don't need to ask that young man's ID as he has been coming here for years. Karen, I don't care. I know the law and my rights. He needs to show his ID to stay on a smoking area. Kind of right, I will concede. Me. Lost entered at the point and plug myself back to my music. Waiter, after a few futile minutes of arguing with Karen, taps my shoulder. Hey man, I'm really sorry. Could you just take out your ID so this lady can move on? Me, take out my ID from the back pocket, which still with my dead name as even though changing your birth certificate is legal and relatively cheap in Mexico City, I would have to spend around $1,000 US to get all of my paperwork. Education, degrees, passport, driver license, you get my drill. Change and I spent most of my savings on my surgery. Waiter, oh ma'am, you can see that he hasn't shown me a valid for identification. Now you have your kid out here and... Karen, let me see that, takes my idea from the waiter's hand. This is clearly fake. This is a woman's name. How dare you impersonate a woman? Waiter, ma'am, the idea is real and you need to give it back to him right now. Karen, no, I am calling the police right now so they can confiscate this and question him about why he is carrying a fake ID. This is a felony, talking to me. Now, you have a lot to explain, young man, if only you could have been polite and not smoke all over my son. Me, finally losing my patience. Lady, I don't owe you an explanation, but for sakes of ending this and me going back to my book, I am transgender man. I was born a woman, but I am not one, and my ID still has to reflect my gender identity. All settled? Good. Now give me back my ID. Karen, while her face went from normal to red in less than three seconds, visibly disturbed, you are a freak. How dare you stand so close to my child, you are going to corrupt him. Now addressing the waiter, Transgender! How dare you allow transgender sexual freaks here? Kid, Mommy, what transgender means? <laughs> Me, knowing that my afternoon is already spoiled and thinking what the heck let the world burn right now. I am transgender. That means I was born like a girl, but inside I always knew I am a boy. So I changed my name and how I look and I am very happy right now. Karen, this is overlapped. A little while I was speaking to her son. Don't talk to my child. Don't even dare. Kid, mommy, that means I can be a girl? Now I don't think the kid is trans or anything. This is actually a pretty common question when explaining little kids about trans people. Karen, took her a few seconds to get out of the shock of it all. How dare you? You are evil and you have just corrupt my son. I demand compensation. Now my child is ruined. Now, as you can imagine by then, we had a pretty small crowd watching over, which eventually got manager's attention. Manager, what is going on out here? Ma'am, I will need to ask you to lower your voice and moderate your language. She used a choice of cuss words and offensive slang to refer to me, but won't even dignify to reproduce them. Karen, I will talk as odd as I want. It is outrageous what happens here. Are you in charge? Manager, yes ma'am, I am the manager of this coffee place, and if you don't lower your voice, I will have to ask you to leave. Now can you explain to me why are you yelling at my staff and customers? Karen, I am a member of the Family League. Family League in Mexico is a right-wing association that fights against LGBT rights in general, abortion, single moms, and yeah, everything that is not your traditional mommy, daddy, and kids' family. I will have this place shut down in a heartbeat if I don't get a compensation right now, manager. Being a bit sassy at this point. And exactly why should we compensate you for? 
Karen. That freak made by boy transgender. You allow a sexual predator be here and corrupt young minds. Manager, and again, how that entitles you to ha to any compensation. Karen, I will have to pay for therapy for my son now. Maybe even ask my congregation to pray over him. That costs money. This is reckless endangerment. Those freaks should be kept away from an innocent, GD-fearing people. Die customer. Come on, lady, stop. You have been drumming our ears for 10 minutes now with your ignorance and transphobia. If anyone is entitled to compensation, is us. Manager, I agree with him, ma'am. Please leave the premises. Karen, this is not the end of things. I will have your license in no time. Grabs her kid and proceeds to leave. Waiter, blocking her away, there is still the small matter of the bill, ma'am, and give me the ID back. Karen, I didn't even got to drink my coffee. It is already cold. I shouldn't have to pay. Manager, that sounds like your problem, but if you want, we can call law security in no time. Let them settle this, and in the meanwhile, also let them write a report of you having your son that is clearly underage on a smoking area. Now, this kind of complaints may lead to be equivalent of CPS involved of mall security passes forward to the police. Karen is defeated at this point. Such a wonderful view. She threw my ID to the ground, got her kid, and started leaving. As she left, I couldn't help myself. Probably not my brightest moment, but yeah, I was pissed. Me, yelling at her kid. Hey kiddo, remember you can be anything you want to be. Karen huffs and puffs and gives me the finger as she walks away. Okay, so greetings from a magical Mexico City. Thanks for letting me vent and for reading this and much love to all my trans. Folks out there, stay strong and don't let transphobes get to you. Okay, everyone, thank you for reading. This was a crazy story. I can't believe this happens. Like, I don't care what beliefs you have. On each side, I just wish that people could just be graceful with each other and not treat each other in such a terrible way. And from the story, it just reminds me to just not treat others differently just because. Just treat them nicely. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Go to my next other videos. I'll be reading more awesome, crazy Reddit stories. And I'm excited to see you guys in the next one. See you guys!